pay the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross and uh, be here in Las Vegas. A few considerations on this feast taken actually in part from the sacred scripture that we have in the reading this morning. And actually starting a few verses before reading today. And the feast of the exaltation of the cross, you know that the mass is the, the holy sacrifice of the mass is the crucifixion. And the crucifixion is Christ dying on the cross in a bloody manner. But the priest represents Christ. The priest stands in the place of Christ. And the priest also of the Old Testament, how does he show himself to stand in the place of Christ in the place of God? And also in the New Testament, stand in the place of Christ, place of God, it is by his sacred vestments. That when we are ordained priests, we are given vestments at each stage of our journey towards the priesthood, we receive vestments. And the vestments come not only in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament. That there is receiving of vestments. We have today the punishment of Aaron. And a few considerations here. We're going to read the scripture from the book of Numbers. God spoke, to the, and where before the Lord spoke to Moses. Let Aaron, saith he, go to his people, and he shall not go to the land which I have given the children of Israel. Because he was incredulous to my words at the waters of contradiction. Take Aaron and his son with him, and bring them up into mountain into the mount of Hor. And when thou shalt thou hast stripped the father of his vesture, thou shalt vest therewith Eleazar his son. Aaron shall be gathered to his people and die there. Moses did as the Lord had commanded, and they went up into the mountain of Mount Hor before all the multitude. And when he did, when he had stripped Aaron of his vestments, he vested Eleazar his son with them. And Aaron being dead in the top of the mountain, he came down with Eleazar. And all the multitude, seeing that Aaron was dead, mourned for him thirty days throughout all their families. And when the king Arad the Canaanite who dwelt towards the south, had heard this. To wit that Israel was come by the way of the spies, he fought against them, and overcoming them, carried off their spoils. But Israel, binding themselves by vow to the Lord, said, If thou wilt deliver this people into, them into my hand, I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord heard the prayers of Israel, and delivered up the Canaanite. And they cut them off, and destroyed their cities, and they shall and they call the name of that place Horma, that is to say Anathema. And they marched from Hor, and by way that leads to the Red Sea, the compass land of Edom, and the people began to be weary of their journey and labor. And speaking against God and Moses, they said, Why didst thou bring us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? There is no bread, nor have we any waters. Our soul now loatheth this very light food. Wherefore the Lord sent among the people fiery serpents, which bit them and killed many of them. Upon which they came to Moses and said, We have sinned, because we have spoken against the Lord and thee. Pray that, we, that he may take away these serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to him, Make a brazen serpent, and set it up for a sign. Whosoever being struck shall look at it, on it and live. Moses and sh shall live. Moses therefore made a brazen serpent, and set it up for a sign, which when they that were bitten looked upon, they were healed. In a few considerations. We have many things happening in the consideration of the church, which part of this, and this feast the exaltation of the cross. Today is also one of the mysterious days of the great king found the holy cross, King, king Heraclius. He found the cross. He was a great hero in his, in his life when he found the cross. And he fought a battle against Khazarez, that defeated him, took the holy cross to Jerusalem, carried up the Mount of Calvary. But at the end of his days, he gave up the faith. At the end of his days, he saw his kingdom destroyed, and the Muslims came, the first Muslims, and wiped out his kingdom, and it was never replaced. The kingdom of Constantinople ended, his kingdom ended, and it never came back. But Heraclius, who carried the miracle of carrying the cross up to Mount Calvary today, on September the 14th. But also, 
the, this, the mystery of the cross. Remember, the mass is the cross, the cross is the mass, and the priest represent of God before men and men before God. And how does he show his priesthood? We often point out that in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, when he hung upon the cross, he wore bloody vestments. And he had to wear bloody vestments because he is God. He is infinitely powerful, and his infinite power is going to be shown by his resurrection. It is shown by his strength as he hangs upon the cross. It's shown by all the things that he does in his, in his, in his life. But he had to prove that he is really a man. Therefore, he wore bloody vestments. When I go to celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, and when any priest goes to celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, or any priest stands in the presence of God, it is not necessary to prove to you that we are men. It is very clear that we are men. In fact, as noted by the fathers, that the bishop has more vestments than the priests. He is given more vestments because he is closer to God, and he represents God. Now, the closer he is to God, the more farther his humanity is from God, and the more obvious is his sinful weakness. And therefore, when the priest goes to Mass, he wears many vestments, that he might cover his humanity, that it not be seen by the people. Well, when we do not have these vestments on, you can see very clearly this is another man who is a sinner like other men, weak like other men, has the faults of other men, and that he is as other men. But when he puts on the sacred vestments, we can see that this man is God. And as he put on vestments, as representative of God, and therefore we put on the vestments. The bishop has more vestments because his humanity must be hidden and covered. He puts on the buskins, he puts on the shoes, he puts on the mitre, he carries the crozier, he wears gloves that you cannot see his hands when he is in full pontifical vestments. That when you look upon the bishop, you see the representative of God. And this comes from the Old Testament when God made the most sacred vestments that he commanded Moses to make, and he gave them to Aaron. And Aaron received these sacred vestments. Also, when there is a consecration of a bishop, when a bishop is consecrated, in the Latin rite we say in the consecration formula, O Lord, endow upon this thy priest, the highest ministry, that whatever these vestments that Aaron wore, the vestments that God made for Aaron, that whatever these vestments stand for, and all, the, all of the truth, and all of the representation of God, and all of the holiness, and all the odor of sweetness, and all of the sacred oil that is represented by these vestments, may this enter into this thy priest, that he may truly be a man of God. And here God said in the book of Numbers, he told and at the, towards the end of the days, Moses would receive his punishment, but Aaron would be punished first. Remember at the waters of contradiction at Meribah, God, Moses was tired and upset, and Aaron was tired and upset. They had been many years bringing these Jewish people to the desert, many years teaching them and teaching them and teaching them and taking them away from the devil, and the people were thick-necked and hard-headed, and they wouldn't listen, and Moses and Aaron grew tired. And then one day, the people were complaining, as they always complained. They were complaining and complaining and complaining, and Moses and Aaron were fed up. And God said to Moses, take the, take the staff and hit the rock of contradiction, hit the rock, which would later be called the rock of contradiction, and out will come water. And what's interesting is Moses said, strike the rock with the rod. And the rod is the rod of Aaron. Remember that Moses never used the rod. Only Aaron used the rod. And whenever Moses made a command, he spoke. And then Aaron repeated his command. And therefore God said to Moses, strike the rock. And Moses said to Aaron, strike the rock. And Aaron was incredulous. That's what it tells us in the scripture today. He did not believe. Moses also was frustrated so he struck the rock, and because they were incredulous, God waited, and the water did not immediately come forth, but they should have been patient and realized, God said, strike the rock, and so they struck it, and he should have been patient, but he was not patient, and therefore they struck the rock a second time, and God punished Moses because Moses commanded the rock be struck a second time, and God punished Aaron because Aaron was unbelieving. Therefore God said, spoke to Moses, and he said, Moses, because Aaron was incredulous, because Aaron the priest doubted, you will take Aaron up to the top of the mountain of Hor, and on the top of that mountain you will divest him. This is the first case 
in the holy priesthood, when we have the term with, with the, first, the practice of defrocking, when there's a prayer, when a priest has committed grave sins, when a priest is not against his priesthood, how is he to def- He can never lose his priesthood because he's a priest forever. But he can be defrocked. His sacred vestments can be taken from him. And therefore, he is brought to the church. And the first time this happened was when Moses took Aaron, the first priest of holy vestments, the first high priest. What's interesting also about Aaron, Aaron built a golden calf. Aaron bowed down to the people. Aaron had lots of people rise up and play. He is the one who made the golden calf, and God did not take away his priesthood, and God did not take away his vestments. Because he was afraid, because he was weak, and because he was scared. And he did what he should not have done, but God did not punish him for this most serious sin. But later on, after seeing the miracles of the crossing of the Red Sea, which of course was already before that, after seeing the daily bread be brought down from heaven, the manna from heaven, after seeing the power of God over and over again, after making through so many difficulties, Aaron became incredulous, and Moses became incredulous, and God did not forgive Moses, and God did not forgive Aaron. When they committed the most serious of sins, Moses murdered. Moses Moses uh, didn't circumcise his own son. Moses with most terrible violations, and God forgave him for them. But for his incredulity at the rock of, of Meribah, which God said, Behold, this rock shall be called the rock of contradiction. For at this rock, water did come forth, and water did flood the desert and fill the, feed the Jewish people, and they were able to drink. But at this rock, God was angry with Moses. And at this rock, God was angry with Aaron. When was the time of that rock in our holy church? Pius XI. Benedict the 15th, Pius the 12th. These are the holy fathers who are the, who are the ones that came after St. Pius X, but they did not walk in his footsteps. They looked with fear at the world around them. And though they saw St. Pius X in his greatness stand up with faith and, and battle the entire modern world and all the modernists and the wicked men of the church, and he saved the church. They wanted to find a compromise way. They wanted to still preach the truth, but they also play games with the modern world. And what happened? They laid the foundations for the corruption of the church and its destruction, and behold, the vestments were taken from them. The devil hates the priesthood, and he hates especially the sacred vestments. When Jesus, the high priest, came back on the, about, the, about the year 630 A.D. And he was coming back from Babylon, and he was walking his way back. And he was on his way back to Israel. Satan came to God and said, Look at Jesus, the high priest. He is in rags. And the Satan was rejoicing, and he was spitting in the face of God. Remember, Satan came to God and spoke to him about Job. He said, Job loves you because he has everything he wants. But let me chastise Job, and he will curse you. And God said, all right, chastise him, and you will see that he is still going to praise me. And Satan came to God another time and said, look at Jesus the high priest. Behold, he is in rags. Is this your high priest? You made sacred vestments for Aaron? These vestments are passed down to the high priest that came after him. And here is Jesus, the high priest, walking in, in ugliness, walking in filth from the Saturday of Babylon back to Jerusalem. Is this your high priest? Behold, he's in rags. And God looked down from heaven. And he said, is this not the man that was plucked from the burning? He saw Jesus, the high priest. Is this not the one that was plucked from the burning? Behold, I will give him new vestments that were more glorious than the old ones. And I will give him a new priesthood that is greater than the one that came before. And he shall be glorious in his priesthood. And this referred to Jesus the high priest, but uh, to Jesus the high priest, but to, but to the your Lord Jesus Christ, who would come 600 years later. And then in the priesthood of the New Testament. But the vestments are sacred, and the vestments are important. 
And God said to Moses, take Aaron up to the top of the mountain and divest him of his vestments and leave him to die on the mountain. And Moses went to the top of the mountain, took off the vestments from Aaron, and Aaron died. Why did Aaron die? He died of grief. He died of a most tragic grief because his priestly vestments were taken from him. And then his and he died, and then his vestments were passed on to his son Eleazar. And Eleazar came down the mountain dressed as the high priest. And Moses came down the mountain, and the people said, Where is Aaron? He is dead on the top of the mountain, because he was incredulous, because he doubted. These vestments that the priest wears, they are a symbol of faith. But what specific faith? The faith in the victory of the cross. The faith in the victory of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. The faith that is sealed by that sacrifice. Because what makes a priest a priest? He is the one that offers a sacrifice. That's what makes a priest a priest. He puts on sacred vestments. He takes in the Old Testament an animal and he kills it in the name of God. And then he consumes in the, in the name of God. And the victim is killed and the victim is consumed. And God is appeased in his anger. Because the priest, chosen by God for the sake of men, put on the sacred vestments. Well, how can he wear these vestments worthily if he does not have faith? And therefore, God punished Aaron. He murdered, or Moses murdered. He punished Moses for the same reason. Moses also was not allowed to go into the Holy Land because he had been credulous at that place. And then what happened? God showed his power to the Jewish people yet again. He said that we were conquered. The king came and attacked them for the Moabites, the, Adamite, the, the Edomites. And they got the grace. To, they said, pray to us, Lord. They went back and wiped out the Edomites. And then they became angry and tired and weary. And they said to Moses, we are tired and weary of this light bread. We're weary of this light bread. That is the manna that is given in the, in the wilderness. We're weary of this light bread. And God became angry. And again, when did God send the serpents? He did not send the serpents when they built the golden calf. But he did send serpents when they became weary of the light bread, the blessed sacrament, which the manna symbolizes, they became weary of it. They became tired of it. And somehow in the priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the 20th century, the priest grew tired of the blessed sacrament. The Blessed Virgin Mary says in the, in, in the 1800s that the priest shall become cesspools of impurity, and so they did. And Lady of Quito said, priest, the priest shall lose his sense of prayer. He shall no longer be immersed in prayer. He is supposed to be the man of prayer. And where does the priest pray? In front of the Blessed Sacrament. He must be in the front of Christ. He must receive the light bread. But he became weary of it. Somehow the priests of the church of the 20th century became weary of it, starting with the high priest. St. Pius X solve the trouble of weariness by saying, give the Holy Communion to the little children. Make sure they receive our Lord Jesus Christ in an early age. Be centered on the Holy Blessed Sacrament. Make sure your priesthood is built upon the cross. But his successors did not follow his way. They did not follow his example. And they committed, quote-unquote, venial sins. We would call them light sins compared to the heresy of modernism. Light sins compared to the worshiping of idols and the false worship that goes on sacrilegiously in the churches today. There were no sacrilegious in the church of Benedict the 15th. There were no sacrilegious in the church of Pius the 12th. But what happened in these churches? They became incredulous. What did Pius the 12th do? He said, well, I have to pay some compromise in the modern world. They say you've got to stop having babies because it's not healthy. I'm against birth control. But how does, let's find a way to make it legitimate. And they say the world evolved. And man evolved, and God did not breathe into the slime of the earth and make Adam, but it was some kind of evolutionary process. Well, as long as we believe that God made Adam, it doesn't matter how he made Adam. And one can see how God would rather that Pius XII said, evolution is 100% right, and creation is 100% wrong, and the, and the Bible of Genesis is full of baloney. 
And I don't believe any of it rather than what he said. He was incredulous. I still believe in Genesis, but I also believe in Darwin. Just like Moses and Aaron disgusted God because they still believe in the miracle, but they weren't sure about the miracle. They believed and they half believed. They used to believe fully, but now they half believe. And they didn't believe in the victory. And they had just had a great victory. They didn't believe in the victory. We just wiped out the entire army of Pharaoh. And many other armies were wiped out by the prayer of Moses. And now they're tired. And now they don't believe anymore. We have forgotten about the miracles of the saints. We forgot about the great victory of St. Pius X in the early 20th century. We forgot about the power of our truth and our gospel. And what happened? The priest became incredulous. And therefore God said, remove the vestments from the priest. And this happened at Vatican II. They took off the vestments. They don't wear even their cassocks anymore. They have taken off the vestments. And we are seeing it happen in the Society of St. Pius since right now, in the last 10 years especially. Priests are more and more trying to go incognito. They want to go incognito. When you see them at church, they wear their nice vestments. But outside, they won't even wear their cassocks. They're disappearing. And they are no longer always in their cassocks. The sacred vestments are being removed. And they're saying, we don't need all these sacred vestments anymore. They were taken away. God punished the church by taking away the sacred vestments. Take Aaron up to the top of the mountain, remove his vestments, and Aaron dies. The vestments are very important. They symbolize our holy faith. They symbolize the sacred cross. They symbolize our, the virtues that we are to have as Catholics, our virtues. They symbolize all things contained in the gospel. And they show our connection all the way back to Adam. For even in the very beginning, Adam had to put on sacred vestments when he did the sacrifice. And, and, and Abel put on sacred vestments. And then God himself designed the sacred vestments of Aaron. And then God said, let him be defrocked. Let his, let his vestments be taken away. The fact that he built a golden calf, that didn't bother me. I got over that. He was forgiven and he remained a priest. But what about his incredulity? The incredulity of the friend is so much more offensive to God than the denial of faith of his enemies or the fear of those in terror. For at this time, Moses and Aaron, they were not afraid of the people. They were just tired and exhausted. And the water didn't come out right away, and they began to doubt. There was no excuse for their doubt. Therefore, Moses died before he go to the Holy, and never went to the Holy Land, and Joshua had to go to the Holy Land. And why did Joshua go and not Moses? And why did Joshua go and not Aaron? Because Joshua never doubted. Joshua never questioned the power of God against all the enemies. And we are now in a great fight that we're entering into right now in the time of persecution. And we must make sure that we are not incredulous. There are many temptations to be given to us. Not all temptations come from the devil. Remember, the first temptation came from God. God is the one who put the tree of knowledge and the, of, of good and evil in the center of the garden. And then he said to Adam, don't eat of that tree of knowledge. God is the one who said to the angels, I am going to become a man. And he would not explain why that was the right thing to do. And the angels were tested. And one third of them failed by pride. And, and the test came from God. And the, he said Adam was tested and he failed. And the test came from God. God will sometimes allow us to have a few struggles, not necessarily just because of the devil, but in order to see if we are going to maintain our faith, will we become incredulous? We must not become incredulous as Aaron did. And Aaron, therefore, went up to the top of the mountain and he died. Aaron did not lose his soul. But he was punished by God because of his incredulity. And just a little bit later, Moses also was punished by God. And Moses had to wander the mountain by himself and die. And the angels buried his body so that he could not be found. Moses wandered off and died like the scapegoat. Aaron was brought up to the top of the mountain and he was left to die. And when he saw his vestments put upon his son, and he saw that he was no longer the priest, that he died of grief. That the priest must be a priest of God in his most sacred vestments. 
And they must recognize that these vestments are holy, they stand for the truth, and we cannot have an incredulity in our mass, incredulity in our, in our, in our, in our church, in our priesthood. And now we have it. We have now new masses, for instance, new Latin masses. And then these Latin masses, they are having the mass, and they are having the sacrifice, but with the acceptance of the new. They believe and they have to believe. They even tell people, you really, I recommend you don't go to the new mass, but I don't condemn it. If you don't condemn it, you have no right to recommend not to go to it. They half believe, and they say half truths, and they say the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, and they wear the sacred vestments that Aaron wore. And yet, one day, God will say, take these vestments from them. Let them go to the top of the mountain and let them die. Because of their incredulity, they wore the vestments. They have the sacred vestments, but they have forgotten that which they stand for. They have forgotten the strength that God gives to the priests in his sacred vestments. They have forgotten that. Therefore, let the vestments be taken from them. When Father Noel was, was being executed, they took him from the mass, wearing his sacred vestments, and they brought him straight to the guillotine in France with his full vestments on, and they brought him up to the, to the guillotine. And his last words were, in Jeribo Adaltare de. I go to the altar of God, the God who gives joy to my youth. And then his head was chopped off. He went to the Mass, and he became a saint, and he died in his sacred vestments. And the vestments have power. We must have confidence in the power of these vestments, and the devil hates them. The well, first vestment removed by the devil of Vatican II was the maniple. He removed the sacred vestment. We are not supposed to wear it during the sermon, because in the sermon, the priest is talking. The maniple is for working, not for talking. So therefore, we remove the maniple. Sometimes we forget that we're supposed to remove it and put it on the, on the missile or somewhere on the altar, because this is not for talking. This is for sweating. This is for working. And the first vestment they removed the Vatican II was, we don't need that maniple. It gets in the way. Also, some priests point out, the maniple also ensures at Mass that you say the Mass in a dignified manner. Because when you're wearing the maniple, it runs into the altar, it can run into the host, it can run into everything. And so you have to be very careful as you move with the maniple, because it's designed to run into everything. It is a sacred vestment that is for our work. It's the first vestment of the priest. When you begin to name the subdeacon, this is the vestment that the subdeacon is given. You are now going to wash the chalice. You are going to do work. You studied for five years. Now it's time to work. Clean the chalice. Clean that place and make sure that your soul is clean. Be frequent with holy confession and bring, and, and bring clean the chalice. Let the soul be cleaned out. And this is the beginning of your priesthood. Work. Now that I've become a bishop, now this is the last vestment that I put on. Before I put on the vestment, before the stole, we put on the maniple. But now I wait till all the vestments are on, and the very last vestment to put on for the bishop, it is the maniple. It is the first vestment of the priest, it's the last vestment of the priest. When we have the fullness of the priesthood, we put this vestment on last, because the bishop must work. These vestments signify the real crucifixion. These vestments signify the real taking away of sin and the real imparting of grace. And Satan hates these vestments, and they are most important. And therefore, God said to Aaron, take him to the top of the mountain and remove his vestments. And that was his punishment, and he died of grief, and Aaron saved his soul. But that was his punishment. Eleazar came down the mountain to take his place. And so... In any case, you must understand the sacredness of these holy vestments. They signify something that is real, and Satan knows it very well. Hence, he has taken away the vestments, turned them into rainbow colors, turned them into burlap, made them disgusting. Because the devil is afraid of the sacred vestments of the priests. He is afraid of them. When they came to take Boniface VIII, Boniface VIII realized they were going to come and take him, and they were going to beat him. He put on his full pontifical vestments. He put on his tiara. 
He commanded all the guards to leave. He sat in his chair of Peter, and he said, This is the chair of Peter, and I am the Holy Father. Whoever lays his hands upon me is excommunicated, and if he repent not, he is damned. And they were terrified. Eighty-year-old man, petrified, with no guards, finally overcame their wickedness, they overcame their fear, and they grabbed him. St. Thomas Becket was killed with the sacred vestments, and so it is in many others. It is the holy, these vestments signify the sacred priesthood, they signify the sacrifice of the mass, they signify a real faith, and they mean something, and we must not be incredulous, so I pray the grace that the meaning of these vestments, as it says the consecration of a bishop, O Lord, may whatever these vestments stood for in the holy Aaron, may these vestments spirit, and may this vestments meaning, may this vestments mystery and signification enter into this priest. And if these vestments enter the priest, he shall be able to defend the church. He shall be able to spread the church. There shall be a protection of the church. There shall be a continuation of the cross. There shall be the handing down of the faith. There shall be the defeating of Satan because of these sacred vestments and their meaning and spirit entering into this priest. So let's pray that the holy vestments that God gave to Aaron, which are now handed also in the New Testament, be handed down to the priests and enter their hearts, enter their being, and give them the strength to be able to fight truly against the modern errors without incredulity. Amen. 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 Amen.